Looking for a place to watch all the games with your buddies this football season? You've got to stop by Long Neck Sports Grill. There are three locations, each one of them with 4K TVs all over the place, and the sound is always on for the big games. And you've heard me talk about Long Neck's menu, but have you tried the wings? What are you waiting for? And no place has a better beer selection than Long Neck's. And don't forget, Long Neck Sports Grill is also home of the Roundtable Show. Wilder, Hebron, and Richwood, each one of them awesome. Long Neck Sports Grill. This football season, stay late. Come often. When we talk injuries on our show, we consult with one of the experts from Ortho Cincy Orthopedics and Sports Medicine. We love Ortho Cincy because they have specialists and locations all over the tri state. They also offer walk in orthopedic urgent care at five tri state locations, and they have extended evening and weekend hours in Edgewood and Anderson. Learn more at orthocincy.com. That's ortho, C I N C Y. Dot com. Dr. Jonathan Slaughter from Ortho Cincy is with us. All right, Joe Burrow. Uh, Zach Taylor says he's done for the year. Torn ligament in his right wrist. Jay Glazer of uh, NFL on Fox says Burrow is looking to pick his surgeon this week. And he tore, quote, the middle ligament in his wrist responsible for stabilization. Can you explain which limit ligament is likely damaged and specifically what it does? So there's two major ligaments inside the wrist that connect small bones. Your wrist joint is made up of eight little bones called your carpal bones, each one with a different name. And the ligaments are typically named after the bones that they connect. So the most common ligament that I think, without having seen the MRI, that he likely tore is going to be the scapholunate ligament that connects the scaphoid and lunate. This is one of your main stabilizing ligaments of the wrist, the other being the lunotriquetral ligament connecting the lunate and triquetrum, which can also be injured but is much less likely to be injured. The one we see most often is the scapholunate, which then connects the scaphoid and lunate like I had previously mentioned, and that provides the stability of the eight bones, keeping them together, allowing them to function and move the wrist uh, to do things as such as simple motion or even gripping a football, baseball, or other things we use the wrist for. So it's most likely a scapholunate ligament. Is this particular injury considered more worse than a bone fracture? Because I think that's where our minds all went to on Thursday night. OMG, he's broken his hand. That's going to be a problem. Is this worse or maybe on the on the more benign level? It's definitely worse, unfortunately. These ligaments can be very difficult. They're inside the joints, so they're constantly coated in joint fluid, which doesn't allow them to just repair on their own. Bones are much, when you break a bone, it's much more predictable to get healing, even though the scaphoid bone, one of the bones that's connected by this ligament, can be a pain and can be difficult to get to heal. Those are much more reliably fixed, healed, timeline more uh, reliable than unfortunately a major ligament injury like this so this would be one situation where uh, breaking a bone would have been better what we all remember from thursday you know he comes out of the game and then he's on the sideline and he's trying to grip a football and ostensibly trying to throw it and then he basically spikes it gives up turns toward the medical staff shakes his head you knew at that point what we were dealing with wasn't good from your perspective Could you have a pretty good idea of what he was dealing with just seeing that those images? Yeah, so I was actually driving my son down for a boys trip down to North Carolina when the game was played and my phone all of a sudden exploded with all these text messages from people what happened to Burroughs. So I had to pull off the highway and actually look at the images. And I started going through first the gripping on that side. I was like, shoot, did he injure his ulnar nerve? Then I was thinking nerves probably okay. Then I started thinking like hook of the hamate, which is a small piece of bone off the hamate that is on the small finger side of the wrist that can cause problems with gripping. I was like, could he have broken his hamate bone? And then you started thinking wrist sprain. And uh, at that point, I was thinking it's either going to be one of these ligaments that's causing the pain where every time he tries to grip his, he actually feels a clunk causing pain in his wrist, causing him to drop the ball or the hook of the hammock fracture. Well, then he got the MRI the next day and that's when it confirmed it was one of the ligaments, not the, not the hook of the hammock or other fracture in his wrist. 
when I was watching the game, I was trying to convince myself because he was on the sideline, but he wasn't wearing a wrap. There was no cast, no bandage. He just, you know, looked like a backup quarterback standing there with the earpiece in trying to help the guy who was in the game uh, try to compete. Why wouldn't they, why wouldn't they wrap it? Why was there nothing on his, on his, on his hand, on his wrist, in your opinion? So initially the thought was there wasn't obvious instability or there wasn't an obvious fracture that needed to be immobilized initially. The initial x-rays at the um, stadium were negative, which is why they were saying wrist sprain. And at that point, it's either let's just put a, a brace on it, a wrap on it to just kind of protect it, let it start to calm down. Or at that time, they were thinking, well, there's not a break. It doesn't seem grossly unstable that they could tell at that point just due to all the adrenaline and everything else going on. Let's just get through today, get to tomorrow, get back to Cincinnati, get a stat MRI, and then see what's going on. So I don't think it was a, if, if x-rays would have shown a fracture, yeah, definitely splint it, brace it, um, protect it. But without a true fracture, it's not something that had to be urgently immobilized. Dr. Jonathan Slaughter from Ortho Cincy is with us talking about uh, Joe Burrow's wrist injury. What's involved with this type of surgery that he's going to have? Yeah, so it's a difficult surgery because you're trying to restore the normal mechanics and stability to, so that the bones don't shift apart and you get this clunk of the little bones. And so a lot of times the most stable part or the most important part of that ligament is on the back side of the wrist. So there's multiple different ways that this has been done in the past, but a lot of times now you're trying to restore that connection between the lunate and scaphoid. And a, a lot of times people will take a small graft of tendon from elsewhere in the body, whether it's part of a wrist extensor or it's part of a wrist flexor. You can steal part of a tendon to create this new ligament um, to also supplement the ligament that's in there to try to protect it and create stability so you'll basically create these tunnels in the bone putting the ligament uh or tendon graft into them as well as a lot of times we'll supplement with this tape we call it an internal brace so it's this real thick uh, almost like um suture tape that creates like almost like acts like an internal cast or an internal brace to protect that ligament while that ligament is then now healing back into the bone and repairing. So it's creating a new ligament as well as repairing the old ligament that's torn and then protecting it a lot of times with this internal brace or this uh, fibrous thick um, suture material that acts like an internal cast. Can you walk me through the timeline for recovery and rehab? Yeah, so this is one of the longer ones. So the, initially, you just want to get the uh, initial healing and protection. And so a lot of times we will immobilize the wrist for six weeks. And a lot of times we'll uh, help immobilize it by putting a temporary thick wire connecting the small bones, holding the bone still, protecting your repair for the first six weeks. And at six weeks, you remove that wire. And then at the six-week mark, when that wire is removed, you start working therapy and the whole goal there is just starting to get motion back you're really not working on strengthening or even starting to throw until three four months out um it takes a good 10 to 12 weeks to get the what the, the fibers that connect ligament to bone are called sharpie fibers and it takes 10 to 12 weeks really for those sharpie fibers to develop and grow and attach this new ligament to his bone so you need to protect it those first three months the first six weeks no motion and then you start the motion at six weeks and then at the three month mark when you should start to have those sharpie fibers with a good attachment to the bone then you can start more aggressive motion and strengthening at that point. But it's really, you're looking up to nine to 12 months to try to get back to his level of performance. All right, so you said nine to 12 months. I was initially going to ask, with some degree of optimism, could he come back and play in the playoffs if the Bengals make it? That's not going to happen. You said nine to 12 months. Is this potentially something that we have to worry about impacting his ability to start next season on time? I would have low concern for that because of just what he has surrounding him, the team of people, the trainers, the access to the hand therapist that he will have to be able to start getting his motion and his strength. 
he is one that I would put on high expectations to be able to perform at the same level he was with good outcomes at the beginning of training camp next year. All right. Well, that's encouraging. Two more for you. Um, once this is healed and this is quote behind him, are there any lingering concerns about long-term effects? So the biggest concern with these long-term is one stiffness. Is he going to be able to get his motion back? And with the people surrounding him, with the therapist, I think he's going to be able to get his motion back. If he's able to get his motion back and we've recreated that ligament to give him the stability, I think long-term is going to be minimal effect. But again, this is one of those stout ligaments most important for the stability of the wrist that can lead to subtle instability that can progress to arthritis and other conditions down the road. But that would be well after his career is done, in my opinion, if he developed right. any of those. One more, and I'm, I'm always interested in a, a medical clinical answer to this question. Joe Burrow is, look, he's, he's wrapping up, or I guess he has had wrap up for him, his fourth NFL season. His injury history is already pretty extensive. Knee injury, he suffered his rookie season. Uh, he obviously had the calf issue at the start of training camp this year. There's this. It's a different type of medical issue, but an appendectomy. And so, you know, now he maybe wears the label of being injury prone. As a medical professional, what do you say to the assertion that, well, he's he's fragile or maybe a little bit uh, less harsh, he's injury prone? Yeah, that's always a tough question because there are some people that are getting these, especially if it's more the soft tissue type injuries, low trauma, um, uh, that's not like non-contact type injuries that you're like, man, they are injury prone. What is going on with them? They just can't catch a break. Joe Burrow, I would put only one of those that I would put into that would be the calf injury of kind of this atraumatic pull to calf. The other knee injury, blown up when playing Baltimore, uh, big trauma to the knee. The wrist, we don't have a great ca- – I haven't seen a good camera view of him going down the play before, but it is that mechanism driving the wrist down that can create this injury with a lunate ligament. So these, uh, those I would put more into the, man, it's just unfortunate. Why does it happen to him? Not so much – man, he cannot catch a break with, like, he didn't do anything, yet he's injured again. So I wouldn't put Burrow quite into that. I do think there are people that just are more prone to injury uh, with little trauma, but I wouldn't put him in that yet. Awesome stuff. Dr. Jonathan Slaughter from uh, Ortho Cincy. I say this every single week. The awesome thing about Ortho Cincy is they have specialists and locations all across the tri-state. This includes walk-in orthopedic urgent care during the week from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. and on Saturdays from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. at both Edgewood and Anderson. It's easier because you never need an appointment and it's cheaper than going to an ER whenever you have an urgent orthopedic injury. Learn more at orthocincy.com. That's ortho, C-I-N-C-Y.com. Long Neck Sports Grill is the place to be this football season with three very easy-to-get-to locations in northern Kentucky, 4K TVs all over the place, and the sound always on for the big games. Long Neck's menu has something for everybody, but you've got to try the wings. And no place has a better beer selection than Long Neck's. Each location is very easy to get to, Wilder, Hebron, and Richwood. And don't forget... Long Neck Sports Grill is the home of the roundtable show. This football season, you've got to get to Long Necks. Stay late, come often.